I'm your instructor, Andrew Joseph Keith, and this is the Proco Figure Sculpting Fundamentals course. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to sculpt the box of the pelvis so that you'll be one step closer to being able to sculpt the RoboBean armature. As usual for the course, we'll be using the Robert Beverly Hale cranial unit system for measuring. Now, all of the bony landmarks of the body are complicated, but the pelvis, it's... It's really complicated. There are tons of bony landmarks for the tendons and ligaments to attach to. There are different angles to consider, complex shapes, and a bunch of holes. Luckily for us as figurative sculptors, we just need to observe a few of the landmarks on the surface to get a good sense of the box of the pelvis. What is most important is creating a box that gives us a reliable structure with points of reference to help us build out the figure. This box will help us align our sculpture with the model and understand the tilt of the pelvis from all angles. You'll remember from the video on the RoboBean that the box of the pelvis includes the pelvis as well as the glutes. That works great for drawing, but because we are adding clay around the box of the pelvis, we will want to create a smaller box that allows us to build on top of it. Because the pelvis is rounded, if we were to make a box that is made using the measurements of the widest points of the pelvis, the box would appear too large and will look like our armature is wearing a big diaper. To avoid this, we want to make sure the front corners of the box represent the anterior superior iliac spine, or ACES. The distance between these two is usually about one and one half units in males and just slightly over one and one half units in females. These two landmarks will give us the angle of the pelvis from the front view. To locate the angle of the pelvis from the side view and complete the top plane of the box of the pelvis, we will use the top of the iliac crest. This means the bumps that indicate the top of the triangle of the sacrum will be in the mid part of the back plane of the box of the pelvis. In a neutral pose, the pelvis is tilted forward and is usually more tilted in females. The distance from the aces on the front side to the back is usually about 3 4 cranial units. Again, remember that we'll be adding clay to this, so it's better for the box of the pelvis to be too thin than too wide. To find the bottom plane, we will just draw a line perpendicular to the angle of the top plane from the side view, and then continue the edges of the box down 3 4 units for females and one unit in males. We can repeat this process from the front view to make sure that the center line of the box is perpendicular to the angle of the aces. This will make the box of the male pelvis one and one half cranial units wide, three fourths units deep and one unit tall. And the female pelvis just slightly over one and one half units wide, three fourths deep and three fourths tall. Keep in mind that these proportions on the pelvis will vary from person to person but these measurements should be a good generalization. If we overlay this box onto the skeleton, we will notice that the pubic synthesis, or pubic bone, will extend forward slightly from the front plane of the box. In the premium course, we will go over how to sculpt a more geometric anatomical bucket that has a more accurate simplification of the anatomical features of the pelvis. Okay, now that we have a general idea of the proportions and size of the box, let's build it onto the armature. If you have any questions on the wire armature, go back and watch the lesson on how to build a wire armature for sculpture. We're going to build this box on one of the 11 and a half inch armatures that we built for gesture studies. If the armature is bent into a gesture study, I would recommend straightening it back out so that we are able to clearly see if the box is symmetrical from side to side and at the right angle for a neutral pose. Then we can start adding clay around the bottom of the spine and along the wire that extends out for the legs. I try to make sure that the clay is compressed tightly against the wire of this area so that the box doesn't become loose when we begin to pose the figure. Once there is some clay in place, we can begin measuring. Starting with the front view, one and one half units wide. Once we have placed enough clay to get a rough box shape started, from the front view, let's look at the side view. From the side view, the acetabulum, or socket joint, where the femur extends from the pelvis is closer to the front plane of the box than the back of the box. It is also closer to the bottom plane of the box than the top, or about two thirds of the way down. This means that as we build up the clay, we can add more clay to the back of the box in the area of the buttocks, as well as to the top of the box, which is close to the bottom of the rib cage. The spine, on the other hand, should be positioned more towards the back of the box, 
about two thirds of the way back. This means that if the armature is standing straight, the box of the pelvis will be angled forward, which is exactly what we want. As we build out the box, let's keep an accurate center line. Once we've got the right amount of mass and we're looking good on our measurements, one and one half unit wide, three fourths deep by one unit tall, then we can take some time to clean up the edges and surface of the box. Remember this will be covered in clay so the forms don't have to be perfect, but they should be symmetrical and accurate so that we have some reliable landmarks to refer to as we begin to add the mass of the figure and shape the contours. I usually like to make the planes of the box more convex and slightly rounded as well as slightly flared out toward the bottom. This isn't mandatory though and if you do make these kinds of adjustments, just be sure that the box remains symmetrical and that the corners that indicate the landmarks stay true to where they should be. It's pointless to make a more organic stylized box that becomes skewed and unreliable. And there you have it. Now that you know how to sculpt the Loomis head, the egg of the rib cage, and the box of the pelvis, you have a much better understanding of these primary masses that make up the figure. You can now sculpt an anatomically correct, posable robo bean sculpture to use as a reference for drawing or as a foundation to sculpt on. In the premium course, I will go over how to sculpt the anatomy bucket of the pelvis, which is a more accurate abstraction of the anatomy of the pelvis, so be sure to check that out. There are also 3D models of the head, rib cage, and pelvis that you can use to inform your sculptures. There are also full-length demos and that warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing that you're helping us create more free and premium content for artists around the world. So thank you for that. If you found this video useful, as always, share it with your friends. You can share your work on social media using the hashtag ProcoSculpture, and I'll see you in the next lesson.